Uh, I want to talk to you today about something that I just came across in the last two or three days, and it really stunned me. Um, I've heard a lot uh, of messages preached and songs written about nowhere men and uh, nowhere people going nowhere and all that business, but I stumbled across a little story, and it, it, uh, it really got into my heart, and I felt like it's what the Lord wanted me to share today. It's about a bridge a bridge. Of course, we know what a bridge is. It's a structure that provides a passage over some sort of a river or a chasm or a gorge or some deep crevice somewhere. That's what a bridge is. We know that. But it's also a connectivity. It's a transitional route to somewhere. And so a bridge has to be connected somewhere. But the story was not about that. It was about uh, a bridge that went nowhere. So that's the title of my message today, A Bridge to Nowhere. A Bridge to Nowhere. Uh, I, I was thinking as, uh, as I was reading the story about this, about that old gospel song Mahalia Jackson used to sing, uh, How I Got Over. How did I make it over? You know, my soul looks back and wonders, how did I make it over? You can almost hear that, can't you? I, my soul looks back and wonder how I made it over, Right? And so that's the connectivity to something, to somewhere. And I understand that the president just uh, said that they're going to be fixing uh, 10 uh, of the most economical bridges in the country. I don't know what that means. I don't know how a bridge can be economical. I don't even know what that means. But okay, it's going to connect us to something. At least some bridges will be fixed. And this is a good thing. Uh, but the question is, will any of these bridges get us where we really need to go? And that's the question we all have to ask ourselves today. This bridge that I, I came across is called, actually the name of it is the Bridge to Nowhere. It goes back to 1918 and Lord Leverholm, who was uh, a man there in the UK, he, he took a boat ride over to Scotland and he went to the Outer Hebrides Islands of Scotland. He fell in love with the property there. It was beautiful. It had a coast and the whole deal. He fell in love with it and decided he wanted to purchase the property. He purchased the property. It was a large uh, plot of land. And, and when he built it, he thought, wouldn't this be a great place for people to come and enjoy? Let's, let's look at this. And so he found, as he was on the property, this deep crevice. This just, you know, it's like uh, somehow we've got to get from here to there. Because somewhere over there, I think there could be a beach or a cliff or something that's probably uh, a beautiful site. And so he went about designing a bridge. It was not easy. You got to remember this was 1918. And so uh, he designed a bridge that would be beautiful. It'd be built out of concrete. And it took 140 men months to build this bridge. They built the bridge and somewhere in the process of building the bridge, the men who were building it finally walked away from the bridge and said, I don't know why we're building this. There's nothing here. It's just ugly. I don't get his vision. There's nothing here. It's a cliff. I'm going to walk across this bridge, drive across this bridge, and there's nothing there but a cliff. I just don't get it. And uh, so the bridge, uh, it became known as the bridge to nowhere. And the interesting thing to me is there was probably 125 reviews after the picture of the bridge and the story about the bridge where people actually went there as late as last year. People are still going to the bridge to nowhere. There's a curiosity about it. It's a pulling. It's a drawing. They go there. And here's the uh, more interesting thing to me is they all write almost the same thing. Well, it was a bridge. And we crossed over it. You can actually drive across it. Uh, but once you get across it, the only thing you can do actually is turn your car around and come back because there's nothing there. There's no extended road. There's no parking lot. There's no park there. It's just a bridge to nowhere. And yet we have people that are drawn to this bridge to nowhere because they're just curious about it. Isn't that the way life is? Somebody builds a bridge to nowhere and then entices men to come about. That's the way the world is. There's all kinds of stuff out there that's pulling at us. It's drawing at us. We see it in the newspaper. We see it on the media every day. Somebody's building a bridge, but I'm here to say most most every bridge in this life is a bridge to nowhere unless it connects you to Jesus Christ. If that bridge is not connecting you to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's simply a bridge to nowhere. It's a bridge to nowhere. Well, that got my curiosity going. A bridge to nowhere. Wow. 
that's got to be unique. That's got to be the only one. This bridge to nowhere there in Scotland. I have to tell you, I kind of want to go see it. <laughs> Isn't that silly? It goes nowhere, but somehow the curiosity got me. It's so much so that I typed in, in Google, bridge to nowhere. You know what I found? There's 10 more of them. There's 10 more of them. Why? Why, you can go just out to California, just north of Azusa, California, and there is the San Gabriel Mountains, and there's a bridge there. And they started building it in 1936, and they decided they would connect these two mountains together. But what they didn't count on was this large stream that came down the mountain. And while they were constructing the bridge, guess what? A flood came, a huge rain came, and it came down and washed out everything underneath. And they realized the road, concrete, asphalt was going to... Every time there was a heavy rain it was going to come down so you know what they did they packed up their tools and walked away i could show you the picture right here in my notes of that bridge it's just a bridge and it goes absolutely nowhere in fact here's the crazy part to get to this bridge you have to hike 10 miles and cross the river two times to get to the bridge now is that nuts but the crazier thing is people do it every day they're going, they're going down this path to the bridge to nowhere. There's a curiosity pulling, but it will never satisfy them. They may see something, but mostly it's just trees. It's not a beautiful vista. It's just trees, a bridge that will take you absolutely nowhere. Well, I got to thinking about that. Now, well, that's just about like life. We see things, and we, it's, grass is always greener. Well, surely it's going to be beautiful. Once we see this bridge, it's going to take us somewhere else, but it really won't satisfy so then I, I got to looking at the next bridge on the list, and it was the Choloteca Bridge down in Honduras. And it's an amazing story as well. And so they start building this bridge in 1996. It was referred to by the Japanese builders as the Bridge to the Rising Sun. The bridge, oh, it was beautiful. The river, the sun coming up in the morning. The bridge to the rising sun because it appeared like the sun arose on the bridge. The bridge to the rising sun. They built the bridge in 1996 to 1998. And would you believe that uh, the first year the bridge was open? Guess what? Hurricane Mitch. Hurricane Mitch. Well, it won't affect the bridge, surely. This was a massive bridge. It was over 400 yards long. It was concrete, steel. It's not going to affect the bridge, right? Well, you're right. It didn't affect the bridge. It just affected everything for miles around it. In fact, it affected it so much that the hurricane, Mitch, when it hit the valley, it rerouted the river beside the bridge. If you go there today, there's a beautiful river running alongside the bridge. Oh, the bridge is still there, but it's just going nowhere. The roads on both sides were taken out, and there's a beautiful bridge just sitting there like an iconic piece of art or something. Oh, you're traveling down the river. Oh, look at that, a beautiful bridge. Yeah, it just doesn't go anywhere. There's no road connected to either side. of It's a bridge. So let me just tell you, life sometimes can take the fun out of life, can it not? Sometime life comes along and it leads you to a bridge to nowhere because life can change the path of the river. Life can change the path of the river. Well, if you're building a bridge to your future today, remember the best laid plans of mice and men. Ah, they didn't see Mitch coming. It was going to be great. It's going to connect these two sides. But see, life happens. And it catches us unaware sometimes. Well, I could go on. There's many more bridges. There's the Foreshore Bridge in Cape Town, you know, South Africa. And then there's Hillendale Bridge right here in Ohio. And the, the Bellhaven Bridge to nowhere in Dunbar, Scotland. And the Hillendale Bridge in, in Euclid. And the Kinsua Bridge in Jewett. And the Viaduct Petrobus in Brazil. They're all over the world. These bridges to nowhere. What does that tell me? There are people all over the world that are suffering because they're on a bridge that will take them nowhere. And you may be on a path today of the same making. Most of the bridges we build in our life will be destroyed by one thing or another. Because everything that man lays his hands on will fail at some point. How many know that it doesn't matter how you plan and how you dream, life can take the starch out of us and life can take us down. Sometimes as young people, uh, we build bridges to our future and we have plans and we have dreams and, and uh and I, I, I remember, Pastor Mooney, he's here with us today. I, I just bring this up, sort of a passing thought that passed my, uh, through my mind here. One day he called me. He was down, I believe, in southern Indiana somewhere. And uh, he, he, he said, okay, you got to write a song. I said, okay. 
What song? He said, well, I just came across a bridge. I came across a bridge, and there was a big saloon. And another saloon. And stuck between these saloons was a church. Directly between them. The name of the saloon was the Backslide Bar. He said, you got to write a song about the Backslide Bar. You know, the crazy thing is I sat down and thought about that. And the most prevalent thought was how many people have crossed the bridge to nowhere and ended up in Backslide Bar. The bright lights chasing the dream chasing the bright lights, thinking if I can just somehow get to the stage, if I can somehow just be in the lights, if somebody can just put my name in the lights, if they could just hear me do what I do, I know it would be my path to the big times. Let me just say, I I say it in all humility today, it's certainly not bragging, but I've had a few opportunities in my lifetime. I've had a few opportunities in my lifetime. I go back to 1988 I, I, don't, I don't know how this happens. God and his providence allows things to come into your life and happen, and you don't really know how they happen. Don't know how these people found us. Don't know the connection at all, but somehow, somehow they heard one of our songs, and they invited us to come and sing in Washington, D.C. At that time was a huge deal called Washington for Jesus. And we stood there. We stood there on a stage in front of over 600,000 people on the mall there in Washington, D.C., And we sang our song. Now, it's one thing to sing your song, and it's another thing to sing your song in front of a big crowd. But you understand it's another thing to sing your song to a big crowd like that and all of them sing back to you. You get what I'm saying? It's like they understand. They know the song. That's a big deal. You know, it's such a big deal that just a few days or weeks ago, I came across somebody took a a photo of us on stage at that rally, Washington for Jesus. Big, huge crowd. They took a picture of us. I came across that in a box of photos uh, a few weeks back, and I, and I, I took a picture up with my phone, and I texted it to the band. used to be in a band. I, I, I texted that picture of the band. I said, wow, look what I found. You know what the band said? Oh, wow. I forgot all about that. Really made an impact, didn't it? Even the band on the stage didn't remember. Oh, it was big time, man. We were in Washington, D.C. Hundreds of thousands of people. Big deal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow, what an impact. I had an opportunity. Isn't that the way life is, though? We think it's such a big deal if I can just achieve this, if I can get to that stage, if I can get to that platform. And men work their entire lives trying to achieve something, a status that will somehow maybe get a monument built to them. Maybe they'll put up a statue somewhere of that person. Can I just say this, folks? Are you not paying attention to the news? They're pulling statues down right and left. They don't mean anything. It's a bridge to nowhere. If you're seeking status, in this life it's a bridge to nowhere if you need a statue built if you're waiting for a plaque if you're waiting for your name and lights it's a bridge to nowhere 20 years nobody's going to know the difference anyway years ago we were in in new orleans and we were going down to cafe dumont going to get a beignet and there was this beautiful statue of a man on a horse and i said i said wow isn't that great they said yeah, who's that? I said, uh, we're standing in Jackson Square. <laughs> okay. No, we're standing in Jackson Square. Okay. Did you not take history in school? We're standing in Jack. They didn't even know that Jackson was the guy writing. You understand what I'm saying, folks? A monument, a statue will mean absolutely nothing in your life if you're not connected to Jesus Christ. The bridges we build will mean nothing in a few years. They'll all crumble and go away. I, I had, uh, along with the band, I had an opportunity to write songs, and, and we, we were a part of a publishing company for many years, and, and I, I remember distinctly sit, sitting at the table one day with the president of the company, and, and uh, we would go periodically to Nashville, and we would play songs for them, and they would try to get people to sing our songs and record our songs and all that kind of thing. I distinctly remembering November of 1988... Uh, when a song that I had written had done quite well, it wasn't supposed to be recorded at all. It was recorded, and then when it was put on the album, uh, it made it to the radio. 
uh, spare you the details of all that. But we're sitting at the table with the president, the vice president of the publishing company. And they're going around the table and they're talking to everybody. And finally, the president of the company looks at me and he says, well, Tim, uh, uh, what's going on in your world? Do you still write songs? Wow. Way to build my ego. Way to really pat me on the back, Prez. The, everybody at the table looked at me and looked at him. Then they looked back at me. And finally, one of them said, uh, Sir, are you not aware that Tim's song is number one in the nation right now on the charts? Oh, well, good. Good. That's great. That's great. Yeah, made me feel really great, did it? In other words, what I'm saying is it doesn't mean anything. It's just a thing, folks. You don't live by it. You don't die by it. I go back to one thing brother, old brother G.A. Mangan said to us years ago. A bunch of us young guys were standing around, and he looked at us, and we were talking about ministry and all these other things. And he said in his own gruff way, he said, boys, let me tell you something. He said, you take all the compliments you get from the world, and they're going to pat you on the back, and they're going to love on you. They're going to say all these wonderful things about you. You take that, and you wad it up in a ball. And then you take all the hate and the criticism you get for everybody and you wrap that around the outside of that ball and you take that big ball and you throw it in the nearest trash can there is because it just don't matter. The only thing that matters is your relationship with Jesus Christ. <laughs> men will fail you and men will turn away from you. But I'm here today to say there's a bridge to a stronger, more uh, prevalent future. And that's the bridge to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nothing we build in this world is going to matter. Nothing we build in this world is going to matter. Corporate ladders. Let's climb the corporate ladder. Let's go for success. I want more dollars. I want more houses and lands and cars and money in the bank and all that stuff. There's people in this room probably have suffered when corporations have shut down or economies have tanked and have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in retirement and everything else. What does that say? There is no security in this life. It's a bridge to nowhere. It's a bridge to nowhere. I was in California going to college and I drove through San Jose and saw this big house. It was astounding. It's called the Winchester Mansion. Everybody know the name Winchester. This is the fellow that invented the rifle, the repeating rifle. It was a big deal. He married a lady from Connecticut, New Haven, Connecticut. Her name was Sarah. And, uh, and he lived a while and then he died. In 1881, he passed away and he gave her, of course, uh, most of the ownership of the company and $20 million. That was a big deal back in 1800s. And she moved to San Jose where her family was. And she decided to buy a place for herself. She bought a farmhouse. It had eight, eight rooms in the farmhouse. And, uh, and so she bought the house. And, and she got somehow connected with a group. And, and they were remodeling the house. And one of the people said, do you, do you go to church? And she said, well, I don't really go to church. She said, well, uh, I'm not a big church person either, but I, we have this spiritual leader. Uh, would you come with us? And so she went with them. And somehow she had been feeling the angst of being a Winchester. Guilt was going on in her heart and in her life. Why? Because her husband was the creator of this rifle that had taken so many lives. And she felt the weight of that. My husband created this. We've made millions of dollars. I'm now very rich because of all of this death connected to this invention. And she carried the weight of that. And she went to this uh, spiritualist, this leader, and he finally told her, he said, well, here's the thing. If you really want to appease yourself, those souls are floating out there, and they, they really don't have anywhere to go. And they, the reason you're feeling guilt is because they're just floating out here because many of them were killed innocently, and, and you're carrying the weight of that because of this guilt. He said, here's the way to fix that. You bought this house, and you're going to remodel this house. So just start building on the house and, and channel all your energy into the house. And as long as you build this house you won't die and you'll give these souls a final resting place so she did today if you go to San Jose you will see a house that has over 200 rooms 10,000 windows. It has trap doors where there shouldn't be trap doors. It has spy holes that go into nothing. There are doorways you open up and there's just a wall there. It means absolutely nothing. There are stairways you can climb up until you bump your head on the ceiling because they don't go anywhere. All she was doing was building a bridge to nowhere, thinking if I build this, it will appease the guilt in my heart. It will take care of some. Let me just tell you, that bridge to nowhere will never appease our hearts because our hearts and souls are only cleansed by 
one thing. It's what we're celebrating today. The blood of Jesus Christ. Wiped across our life is the only thing that will bring peace of mind. It's the only bridge that is not a bridge to nowhere. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Oh, it was just a house. She was trying to bridge a gap between two worlds, but it was a bridge to nowhere. We're constantly building these bridges, and they're of our own making. We build bridges of dreams. We build bridges of ambition, bridges of promises, and bridges of man's approval. And all of them are bridges to nowhere. True happiness only comes on one bridge. Amen. This is only one bridge, and, and that's when we cross over to contentment. But it's not a bridge of mortar and stone. You're not going to drive out in the field somewhere and find it. It's not covering a gorge and it's not taking you out to some beautiful vista anywhere. There is nothing of this earth about this bridge. It's a spiritual bridge. And it's one we cannot build on our own. It had to come from God himself. He began building this bridge back at creation itself. He made everything there was and he said it was good. But then he said, I'm lonely. And so he built a man. But he put something in man that nothing else has. It's called a free will. We have the right to choose. He made us different than the animals and different than the angels. All of those follow after their, uh, their, what they're supposed to do. The program, the way they were built, the way they were made. An animal just does what it does. The birds fly south because that's just what they do. A homing pigeon can find his way home because that's the way he's programmed. But in you and in me, God put one more element. He says, I'm going to give you the right to pick and choose. I'm going to give you the right to pick and choose. Now, he also understood that in our frailty, in our man, in our womanhood, that we would make mistakes. So he began immediately building a bridge back to man, back to God, from man back to God. And, of course, we know he put Adam and Eve in the garden. and They sinned, and something had to die. And so he took the animals, and he killed the animals, and he covered them with the skins of the animal. He said, sin, it, it requires a, a penalty, a sacrifice has to be made. And all through the Old Testament, we know how it goes. A uh, bridge was built every year when they would bring the, the sacrifice in. But it never actually got rid of sin. It just rolled it back. The guilt was still there. They still carried it. You know, how many know, and you don't have to raise your hand, certainly, but how many know that guilt is something that is really a hard thing to purge your mind of? See, you can be forgiven of a sin, and you can ask someone's forgiveness, but forgetting is a whole different story. Many times we carry guilt with us. We carry the weight of past sins with us. And it's hard to purge that out of our life. But I'm here to tell you today, God, through his sacrifice on Calvary, built a bridge that will take care of all of that. We lived under the law, but the law was too harsh. Nobody could live under the law. And so he robed himself in flesh. And he came to this earth in the form of a baby. And he lived his life, the only pure person ever to walk on terra firma, and he set himself up because it was a sacrifice that had to be made. Once and for all, he took on our sins. Once and for all, he took it all. He said, he said to, to uh, Nicodemus in John 3 and 5, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. I'm building a bridge to you. Unless you're born of water and spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot cross this bridge. I'm building a bridge to you, but this is sort of the toll, if you will, getting across the bridge. I'm building it to you, and I'm reaching out to you. In Luke 19, 10, it says, For the Son of Man is come to save, uh, seek and save that which was lost. That's what the bridge is all about. It's seeking and saving that which is lost. It's seeking and saving that person that's riddled with guilt for past sins, for things that have happened, Listen, let me tell you something. The bridge is being built into this sanctuary today. God himself is saying, do you understand what today is? We celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection, which was the bridge that will get you out of all of this. This is the only bridge that actually leads somewhere. It leads to eternal life. It leads to eternal life. You say, well, I'm going to wait till the last minute and then jump on the train. Oh, you don't have to do that. It, come on. The Bible also says that when he fills you with the Holy Ghost, it's just the earnest of the Spirit. You can have the same life right here that you'll have over there when you cross that bridge, when you allow his blood to cleanse you of every stain. 
You can cross that bridge into a new life, happiness and contentment, out of sorrow and despair, an overcoming life. No, it's not a structural bridge. It's not some bridge we're going to cross out here. It's a spiritual bridge, and you find it at an altar. You find it at an altar. You say, well, does it have to be here? No, it can be anywhere. I, I know many people have pulled off the side of the road in their car and lifted up their hands and began to cry out to God, and he would touch them in that moment and change their lives. It's a bridge that will meet you in your need. Wherever your need is, it's a bridge that will reach out to you, a spiritual bridge. It was hard. It's hard. Some people don't understand it. Today, we have people around our own country, right here in America, do we ever think that it would happen that there would be people here in America that didn't know who Jesus Christ is? But yet, you can go to our large cities in, in New York and L.A., and there are people that have never been in a church. They don't know anything about God. They don't know anything about religion. They, they don't know any of that. It's a hard thing. But we shouldn't be too hard on them because even the disciples struggled with it. Jesus was talking to his disciples and trying to explain the kingdom of what it would be. And Peter said to him, he says, well, you just tell us what to do and we'll go out and we'll marshal army. We'll make things happen. And Jesus said, you're not understanding even what I'm doing here. You, you don't get it either. It's a hard thing sometimes to wrap our head around. And so Pilate didn't understand either. He said, are you the king? And he said, well, you say I'm the king. He keeps talking, and finally Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. There's only one place that we're going to find a bridge that will gap the worlds, and it's at an altar where the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to our life. He said, forget this world, forget your weapons, forget your armies. It's not about that. It's not about terra firma. It's a spiritual thing that's going to happen in you. Let me just tell you something, folks. There is a God-sized hole in your heart. And nothing will ever fill that hole but Jesus Christ. You can walk out of here today and say, it's not for me. I don't have anything to do with it. I don't need Christ. But I'm just telling you, there is a hole inside your soul that will never be filled by the things of this world. You can follow the bridges of this world, but they'll never fulfill you. You'll never get where you need to be. The only bridge you need is the bridge to Jesus Christ. So he came. And he lived, and he took the stripes. He took the whipping. He took the beating. His stripes were for our healing. You don't talk about promises. This book right here is full of promises. It's full of healings. It's full of miracles. There are miracles that are waiting on you, but you got to cross the bridge to get to Christ. He came. He suffered. He died. And he went into the grave. Hell thought we've won. Mighty victory. We've won. Let me just say this. It takes a long time to build these cement bridges, the rope bridges, suspension bridges. But when it comes to spiritual things, a lot can happen in three days. What they saw as the end of everything on Friday started turning around. Sometime, I don't know, there's no timeline on it. When nobody was taking notes. But sometime between Friday and Sunday, Jesus went down to Satan. He says, look, I know you think you've won, but I'm here to demand the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He bought for us hope beyond this life. He bought for us hope beyond this veil of tears right here. And on the third day, hallelujah, on the third day, he rose from the dead. The stone rolled back. He walked out victorious. And because he lives today, we can cross that bridge to contentment. Because he lives today, we can walk that bridge to forgiveness. Because he lives today, we can walk that bridge and get rid of all the guilt in our lives. His resurrection took away the fear of failure. His resurrection took away the guilt of our pains of the past. And don't say, well, I've never done anything bad. We've all got a few skeletons that we don't want anybody shaking around in the closet. Come on. Let's be honest here today. There's none of us that are pure. There's none of us that are holy. We've all got a few things we'd change about our past. Well, I'm here to tell you, he's built a bridge to your past, and he can erase all of that stuff today. All you got to do is cross the bridge to Jesus Christ. Cross the bridge to forgiveness. The day of Pentecost. He said, go and Terry. I'm going I'm to teach you how to cross this bridge. The day of Pentecost. Peter stood up when he was asked the right question. What should we do? And he said, it's real simple. Repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. You be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of those sins. 
Paul talked about that later. He said it's the blotting out of handwriting against you. It gets rid of it. And the amazing thing about this is when you go down in the waters of salvation, the sin is gone. What does that mean in Colossians where it says it's a blotting out of handwriting? It means it's gone as if never remembered, as if it never. What You want to get guilt out of your life today? What you need to do is cross the bridge to forgiveness. You need to cross the bridge to forgiveness because when Christ forgives, the sin is gone. To be remembered no more. And then he says, I will give you the free gift of the Holy Ghost. I'll fill your life with something that's so powerful. And you might say, you just don't know where I've been. Stand with me. You just don't know where I've been. You just don't know what I've done. Can I just say today, it doesn't matter who you are. God's no respecter of person. I'd also like to say it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've been through or what you've been involved in. Because God has a way through his mercy and grace and the precious blood that was shed to wipe it all out. And he's built a bridge to you today. Because he's alive, you can take all your fear to God. You can take all your care to God. You can take all of those nagging regrets to God and all the mistakes to God. Whatever confusions you may have, the questions you may have, you can lay them on an altar and let God appease all of that. The disappointments of life. We sang about it a while ago. My sin is gone. I am forgiven. Now I'm alive and my future's written because of the bridge to Jesus Christ. It's not a bridge to nowhere, folks. It's the only bridge that will get you out of here. I wish you'd bow your heads with me right now. When he rose from the grave, he broke the bonds of this world because he offered us redemption. He offered us a way out. He offered us the only bridge that's ever going to matter. We need to stop looking here in this world. We need to stop looking for all the entertainment aspects, the the ladders of corporate uh, world to to climb. We need to stop looking for the things of this world. We need to look at the only bridge that matters. 